children of Israel are looking desperately between the Egyptian army on one side uh, and the sea on the other side, sure that they're about to die, God commands Moses to lift his staff and causes the sea to split. Um, so the children of Israel walk on dry land and the water forms a wall on each side of them and they make it miraculously out um, just as it, the water starts crashing down on the Egyptians. Uh, so I want to focus on what they do at this moment right after the sea splits, um, as they realize that they're truly free, and particularly on a few key words in that, in that passage. Um, so the verse says, On that day Hashem saved Israel from the hand of Egypt, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Vayiru ha'am et Hashem, and the people saw Hashem, vayaminu Hashem uvo Moshe avdo, and they had faith in God and in Moses his servant. Um, and then what did they do after that? As Yashir Moshe Ubene Israel Atashira Hazot Hashem. Then Moses and the children of Israel choose to sing, chose to sing this song to Hashem. So after such a traumatic event um, as leaving the place where they're enslaved and then being miraculously saved, the first thing that they do is sing. Uh, so if it were me just kind of like thinking about this in modern day, like imagine surviving a car crash or uh, something like that. I don't I don't think the first thing I would do is sing. <laughs> I'd like maybe cry or hug someone, but I don't think I'd just burst into musical song. Um, so I want to figure out like what, what is this song that they sing and what's the significance of it? Um, so this isn't just any song that we might hear on the radio today. Uh, according to the sages, and this is quoting from Art Scroll, in the Torah's definition, a song is a profound and unusual spiritual phenomenon. And from the beginning of creation, all the way to the end of this scriptural period, there were apparently only 10 songs in the world. So what then is a song in the Torah's definition? Uh, sometimes the parts of our lives can feel really separate and dissonant, and it can be really hard to figure out how everything connects together. Uh, and then in very rare and fleeting moments, we realize how every puzzle piece falls into place, and we understand how every note, instrument, and participant in God's symphony of creation plays its role. Um, so at that moment, after crossing the sea, the Bnei Israel suddenly realized how all of their suffering, all of their difficulties, and every single unrelated and incomprehensible event worked together as part of a harmony to lead up to this incredible miracle. Um, so all of those strands of our lives that sometimes seem like they don't fit together, that you, they saw at that moment, how they're all part of a greater whole. So just like strands of a quilt or strokes of a painting, each one was completely necessary for the whole to be a complete picture. Um, uh, and they had faith or they were faithful. Um, so I want to focus specifically on this word. Um, in modern day Hebrew, as many of you know, yaminu would be future tense. Um, but in Torah Hebrew, the vav combined with the future tense actually makes it read as past tense. Um, but I want to focus on it as though it was future tense, as though they're saying, uh, and the children of Israel will be faithful. So how could they say that they would always be faithful to Hashem or they'd always have faith in Hashem? Uh, especially when we know that as soon as later in this parasha, they, they actually challenged Hashem. Um, I think the, the answer is that at this moment by the sea, they understand not only how all past events brought them to where they are now, but also that all future events are also part of God's plan. And that's how they could be on Minu, be forever faithful because they understood in this moment the entire timeline of world events and how every past and present and future event fit together to make the whole. Um, so this idea of song or shira as being each individual part fitting together to make a harmonious whole, I think is not only beautiful in terms of our worldview, but also in terms of thinking about who we are as individuals in a community. Um, so often we're told one of two things, be unique and stand out from the crowd, or we should all get along because when it comes down to it, we're all the same. Uh, but Judaism doesn't erase our differences, and it doesn't tell us to use our differences to uh, elevate ourselves above others. It incorporates our differences as an essential part of the whole. Be unique and use your unique uniqueness to complete the crowd. You have to recognize your uniqueness in order to play your part correctly in the whole. Um, and the world only works when each person is playing its part. A song only happens when each individual is playing their note as they're assigned to. That's the only time there can actually be harmony. Uh, so this recognition of the importance of each part 
completely shatters the concept of, je of jealousy. Because like, imagine you're a violin player in a symphony. You wouldn't be jealous of someone with a different, sheet of, a, a different piece of sheet music. It just doesn't make sense. Um, and just like that, in the song of the world, we each have our role. Um, and for each of us was the world created. So the Mishnah Sanhedrin says, a human being stamps many coins with one die, and they are all alike. But the Blessed Holy One has stamped all of humanity with the die of the first man, and yet none of them is like his fellow. Therefore, each person is obligated to say, for my sake was the world created. So when we say that, when we say for my sake the world was created, that's not just an egotistical statement, but it's an actual truth. Because without each one of us uh, playing our own vital mission in the world, uh, the world wouldn't work. Um, and even as they crossed, even as the children of Israel crossed the sea, the Midrash says that each tribe had their own separate path to cross through, but they could still see each other because the walls were see-through. Um, and in their song, uh, the children of Israel say, uh, Zayli, this is my God. Each one found in Hashem his or her personal God, each one connected in their own personal way. Um, the entire nation, from the greatest prophet to the lowliest maidservant, saying, uh, everyone on an even plane, reaching the highest level of prophecy. The Midrash says that even the embryos in their mother's wombs <coughs> um, So I think the message we can take from that is that even though there's, even looking around this room, there's a lot of different viewpoints, a lot of different observance levels, and that's exactly how it should be, as long as we're using our own unique connection to strengthen the Jewish people as a whole. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to focus on the word yashir. They chose to sing. So the children of Israel could have just been wowed in the moment and let their inspiration fade away, uh, but they didn't. Instead, they took their awe and their belief and their faith, and they immediately translated it into a song or action. Uh, and they dragged it down into something that was tangible, that we still have today. Uh, and that's the key for keeping inspiration alive. Uh, so we can always choose to see miracles in our everyday lives, the strands are always there in front of us, we can, and we can always choose to take these separate parts of ourselves, of each other, and um, of, of our lives, and, and see in it the symphony of creation. And uh, the sages say that that spiritual height that our ancestors reached at the sea is always there for us too, if we choose it. So wishing everyone a week full of spiritual heights. Amen. Thanks for having me. Thank you.